Hey there. Uh, I just got asked a quick question about whether I could show uh, how to use the uh, built-in functions uh, within Excel as it pertains to doing present value calculations. And so uh, I've got a spreadsheet open and I'm just going to very quickly show you, I guess, some of the power. It's also some of the frustration because the, uh, the formulas that they use are very complicated and very specific. <clears throat> so uh, you might recognize uh, this example. It's in one of my uh, lectures. And so this is where I've gone and manually calculated uh, the present value. And so what we have is a cash flow uh, laid out over 10 years and we're showing the annual cash flow. So we have outlays in the first two years and then a $4,000 annuity uh, going on with an additional $3,000 uh, over and above the $4,000 in year 10. Uh, for salvage and then we use uh, the formula which is built right here so this is done manually explicitly i've uh, input that to come up with what the present value is for each of those future values uh, from years one through year 10 and of course in year zero it's going to be the same uh, and, and then this is uh, the last column here is just a running sum and you'll see we get to uh, the net present value here at the end, uh, which is the same as the net present value down here, which is just the sum of all of those present values. But, but that's not using the built-in functions. So if I wanted to use the built-in functions, the first thing I want you to know is that they, Excel has a whole bunch of functions dealing with issues in and around compounding interest and uh, discounting cash flows and, and everything else. And, and they are very, personally I find somewhat convoluted. Uh, but we're going to use one here and what we're going to use is the net present value. Uh, so I'm going to put it in here and it's NPV for net present value. And of course you start to get some guidance by Excel as to what you need to put into that. Of course, if you go up here and you press the function button, you're going to get the dialog box, uh, which will start to help you, um, as to what you have to, uh, fill out and you can press the help on this function and that'll open up a, a larger help dialog box, which will help explain the various functions. Okay, so that's available to you. So we'll go back here, I'll do that again. So equals net present value, and that's different than what they use for present value. And what we're going to have to do is the first thing we have to do is give it a rate. That's the first parameter. And then we have to give it each of the uh, successive uh, future payments. And of course they start in year one, not in year zero, start in year one. And, and so basically I'm going to highlight those future payments from C6 to C15 and close that. Uh, but then we're going to have to add in the year zero cash outlay. Uh, so I'm going to add in our year, year zero cash outlay. And when I hit equals, we're going to see that our net present value now is equal to the same value that we had calculated manually. Now, honest to God, when you go to the help and you look at the net present value formula, you're going to have a hard time trying to figure out all of that. Certainly net present value, much more functional or, or useful or, no, nah, I guess they're all useful. It's more obvious to me uh, than say present value or some of the other functions that they provide. So as an alternative, I, I also alluded to in one of those lectures that you can set up your own custom functions, in which case you can, you know, do it in a more explicit uh, and logical way rather than using a whole bunch of built-in algorithm uh, to do it. And, and so in this uh, spreadsheet, uh, I've done that. So you see, I got the developer tab open here. So I'm just gonna show it to you very quickly. So if I open up the Visual Basic module, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of different functions and these functions return the factors for different types of future payments, annuities, gradients, you name it. And, and so uh, if you're used to a more analytical approach to this, where, where you uh, reduce your cash flows and bring them back to a net present value, uh, you would use it, do it using these functions. And so what I've done is I've just programmed in the formulas for each of those functions, and now I can call on them uh, as I would as if I was doing this by hand. So the one we're going to be using is uh, the present value given a future value. And of course, it'll need to know the interest uh, rate and the number 
or the number of years away for that payment. So it's for a single future payment in a given year, and we're going to bring it back to a present value. And so that's the PFIN. So if I go over here, remember it's the actual factor. So I've added a column here called PFIN where I'm going to get the factor for that given year and interest rate. So I'm going to go, I'm going to call on my custom function. You see it, it recognizes that it's in there because it's in the module and it needs an interest rate and a year. So here's the interest rate and I'm going to use my function F4 to, to lock that in so I can drag this down later. And then it needs to know the number of years or periods uh, it is away. And then I can hit equals and that will give you that factor. And now I can drag that factor down over the 10 years to get the factors for each of those years. So now it becomes quite straightforward because I can basically take my cash outlay in uh, uh, dollars uh, for that given year, multiply it by the factor for that year, and hit equals, and then drag that down for all of the years. And we're going to get the present value for each of those payments, which I've done a running total here. And you'll see the end is equal to the present value that we had before. And of course I can do the sum here equals the sum of all of these payments, close brackets, hit enter, and we get the same value. And so, this is a, a, I think, a nice clean way to be able to stay connected to your spreadsheet and what is going on by using the analytical factors rather than a convoluted built-in formula. So hopefully that was helpful to you. I will give you a link. Uh, I did mention that I, I do have a video that teaches you how to uh, use custom functions uh, within Excel. Uh, now it is more of an engineering example rather than a financial example, uh, but I'll put the link up here. So if you're interested in how to uh, sophisticate your use of uh, spreadsheets, uh, that's probably a really good way to do it. Keep in mind that because of the nature of the language and security around using uh, Visual Basic for applications, uh, there's a different file type that you have to save it. Uh, it, it it'll save as it, in order to keep the macros uh, functioning. Uh, so hopefully that was useful and uh, you can make use of the, the information.